In the last uh, video we added an alarm page and we added the button uh, on both the alarm and the main screens to be able to flip back between the two screens. Today what we're going to do is cover um, how to set up an alarm. Now pre uh, prior to starting this video what I've done is created a DB block in my project and opening that I have set up 16 bits in one word and uh, set them up with emergency stop and alarm to etc. Okay so we've done that and uh, what we're going to do is be using that data block within the WinCC. Now we have to be very a bit careful with this and uh, we'll, we'll look at this uh, shortly. Now Go to your alarm page and what we need to do is be able to create something to uh, display those alarms. And if you go from simple objects where we've been working lately into enhanced objects, you see alarm view. If you click on that, drag and drop it into our page, we get ourselves a little uh, screen to show our alarms. If you go into the properties of this, you see that uh, uh, part of the properties is alarms or alarm events and uh, pending alarms and acknowledged alarms or unacknowledged alarms I should say and that's what you're setting up to, to show and you can sh uh, set up the classes of what you want this particular object to show do you want it to show just errors or just diagnostic events or just warnings or systems or do you want to show it everything and that's in the fact that you may, when you're creating a program and creating your screen, that if it's for the operators to, uh, to use only, um, then you may only want to show the errors and warnings. If you have system faults, you may want to put that onto another page elsewhere out of um, the operator's reach. Uh, so it doesn't get co too confusing because any system you can have quite a lot of messages uh, on your system so you may want to split them up and put system alarms elsewhere be your choice for the time being we're going to leave everything checked okay so we've now created our uh, alarm object uh, but we have to create our alarm messages so if you go to alarm management and at the moment we'll just deal with discrete alarms uh, we won't worry about uh, analog alarms those will be for another video so double click your discrete alarms and you get a page up like this and this is basically very similar to your text lists that we dealt with in uh, one of our previous videos where we created a list of uh, items and that we could show them in one of our combo boxes we're going to do a similar thing. So this, but this list is going to be purely for alarms. So if you double click in the top corner there, you create yourself an alarm. Okay, and uh, it gives it just an ID number. And if you put another one in, it will just increment the alarm numbers as they go. So we'll just uh, delete that one for the time being. Okay, well, the text box, what's the text box? That is what uh, text you want to show should this alarm um, be triggered so we'll just put in emergency stop and if we go back to our previous ladder and open up our DB2 this is the alarm that we're going to trigger it to okay so when the PLC triggers that data block bit that will send a message to the screen to say trigger that alarm that is connected to 0, 0.0 in db2 all right so we go back and this is part of our trigger tag okay we can add this to a class uh, before i do the trigger tag i should tell you that we can choose which class we want it to be do we want it to be as an error or do we want it to be as a warning well, we'll leave it as an error for the moment and remembering that when we went back here, this gave us the classes that we wanted to display in this one. So we're going to display the errors. Okay, the trigger tag. 
trigger tag is what we're going to uh, connect it to. Um, now I'm going to, I've already created one here, but I'm going to do it again uh, just to show you. Okay, so click the new, and we'll call it alarms. Okay, we'll just uh, actually what I'll just put tag alarms. Okay, we've connected it to our PLC, which is going to be our connection one. We need it to be a word because that's what we've got here. Even though we've got them as bits, we've got a full word worth of bits. Okay, uh, go back to uh, here. Then we go into the properties. We've got to tell it where it's going to look. What word are we looking at? Well, we're going to be looking at a DB. Okay, you have a choice. Inputs, outputs, memory flags, etc. But our DB is DB2 and it's going to be word zero. Okay, so we'll just click OK on that. And that's basically saying that look at DB2 word zero and word zero incorporates everything down to here okay now this gets a little bit confusing at the moment if you notice now when we've chosen our trigger tag we've got trigger bit zero but the trigger address here is showing db2 dot dbx 1.0 which is wrong that's that one there okay it's the way that WinCC have structured the bits against what how the DBs do it in the Siemens um, SF manager so this will be bit 0 bit 1 bit 2 bit 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and our word here is bit 8 all right we will deal with Siemens uh, words and how they um, uh, lay them out um, and how they structure them later. But for the time being, we've got the 1.0 there, which is bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, so we go back and we choose bit 8. Okay. And now you see that the trigger address is shown as the address that we want it to be. Okay, so we can now see if that works. And here we cross our fingers. Not really. We'll start up in the. Uh, oh, I did the runtime. I apologise. Sorry. Did I do the runtime? No, I should have just triggered the uh, the simulator. That's right. Sorry, my fault. I had done it. Right. Here we've got our our main screen. We click the button, and that takes us to our alarm screen. We've now also got up the simulator. Now I'm just going to open these up a little bit. What we're going to do is choose our tag first. Okay. Now we know our tag is. Uh, tag alarms is the one that we set it into the display format we're going to put into binary okay so there's our current value it's all set at zeros so it's this data block is all set as zeros or false which is correct so we've got our minimum and our maximum values here as it shows you now one thing to, to don't get too uh, confused with this notice that in both the minimum value maximum value and the current value they've got them in blocks of four bits and there's a space between them what we're going to do is simulate the value and put the value in ourselves but we must put the value in without spaces okay now remembering that this bit is our db 2.dbx 0, 0.0 so what we're going to do is I'm going to click into there and I'm going to put 1 which is our trigger bit to send it high 2 3 and I'm now going to set all the other bits to 0 
okay and you can see that we've now got um, our 16-bit word with that first bit in as high um, oops did I do that oh I've got it wrong haven't I sorry I've triggered the wrong bit uh, Hi guys, sorry about that. I just put that on pause a little. I got myself a little confused, um, and I think the camera software is uh, slowing things down. But here we go. Okay, we've got our current value here, and we need to set our bit. Well, our word zero is this word here, and word uh, what? Uh, sorry, word zero is all of this. Byte zero is this half, and byte one is that half. And the way that Siemens work it is it's by a bit zero, bit one, bit two, bit three, bit four, bit five, bit six, bit seven. So we're going from right to left in the byte, but left to right in the word. So it's word zero, that's zero byte and byte one. But when we go to the bit, we have to remember to go from right to left in the byte. So bit uh, 0, 0.0 in our uh, word will be 0, 0, 0, four zeros, and 0, 0, 0, 3, 1, okay? So what we've got is in the first byte here, which is byte 0 in our um, word 0, we've got bit 0 is high, bit 1 is low, bit 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 is all low. And then in the uh, next byte, which is byte 1, uh, we just need to set those two uh, zeros. Okay, and if we hit, there we go. <laughs> uh, it gets a little confusing and because of this, I will make another video on uh, words and uh, the structure of the words of Siemens um, because it does get a little confusing when you're looking at it from the WinC perspective uh, to the data block perspective okay um, because they do it in a column zero downwards and in the um, uh, actually in the uh, WinCC they do it as word zero and then from left to right and then the bits go right to left so be very very careful on those okay uh, going back to that we've seen now that we've got our message coming up okay and you can set up all these properties of the text the status the date and the time um, and message number okay um, and various other things as well and this you can use for login or anything else